Welcome to the Fun Facts of Mythology channel. Possibly one of the most enigmatic places in the world is undoubtedly Egypt. However, the origin of the Egyptian people is still the subject of debates and discussions. Presenting a civilization composed of skilled mathematicians and prosperous farmers, appearing suddenly in history, but with a gradual cultural development. The origin of the Egyptians involves the mystery of the true roots of civilization. In this video, I'm going to cover the biblical perspective and what ancient Jewish traditions say about the ancient Egyptians and the kingdom of Kemet as it was known in ancient Egyptian. Therefore, I ask you to leave your like and comment what you think of the video and also subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed. There are many issues surrounding ancient Egypt, especially the racial debate over the Egyptian population at the time. Many of these debates are aimed at discovering the ethnic reality of the ancient Egyptians and, over time, theories and more theories have been created about their physical appearance. However, the truth is that the physical appearance, race and ethnicity of the ancient Egyptians are well documented in the ancient murals in the pyramids and other sites of ancient Egypt. These representations show the population with a brownish skin tone, although there are also representations of Egyptians with lighter skin. And the Holy Scriptures will provide the answer to the origin of the ancient Egyptians. A biblical character, descendant of Ham, called Mizraim, is frequently mentioned in ancient Jewish traditions, as well as in the Bible itself. Furthermore, Arab and Syrian peoples, as well as most Semitic peoples, in their traditions, identify a character named Misraim as Egypt and the Egyptian people originally from there. It is interesting to note that in ancient Semitic languages, Egypt was called by names similar to the ancestor Misraim. In Hebrew and Phoenician it is called Mitrahim, while in Aramaic it is Misraim, and in Arabic Misr. All these terms have a similar origin to the name Misraim. Another curious fact is that the Bible describes the land of Egypt as the land of Cam, that is, located in Africa, more specifically in North Africa. Egypt is considered the land of Ham, the land of Ham's manhood, and Mizraim is his son. Some interpretations suggest that Mizraim could be Ham's firstborn, the firstborn, but there are arguments to the contrary that claim that Cush was the true firstborn of Ham. Both Cush and Mizraim were sons of Ham. It is interesting to note that the ancient Egyptians share genetic similarities with contemporary people considered to be their brothers, or at least have a common genetic heritage. These people are the contemporary Berbers. The Berbers have a mixed ancestry, as some North Africans are also direct descendants of Mizraim, son of Ham, clearly mixed with Semites and also with some peoples descended from Japhet, including Europeans. We know this through linguistics, as we can detect ethnic, genetic and cultural similarities between these sister peoples. The Berber languages, known today as Tamazite or Amazigh, are linguistically related to the ancient Egyptian language, called Kemet by the Egyptians. It is biblically evident that the ancestor of ancient Egypt was Mizraim, son of Ham. So the ancient Egyptians were Hamite or Ramite peoples and for that reason they had darker skin tone, not as dark or similar to some other Africans like the Sudanese, people from Ethiopia or even Eritrea, but mainly from Sudan. The Neolithic period in Egypt is traditionally dated to 10,506 BC, when stone scythes and ships with oars were already in use. If humanity originated in Africa, it is contradictory to think that agriculture was brought from outside that continent, which goes against the idea that humanity developed from Africa to the rest of the world. The megaliths of ancient Egypt, dating from 5000 BC, are evidence that the peoples south of the Nile already possessed astronomical knowledge and were familiar with the same cultures that developed in the Mediterranean and the Middle East. At that time, the Arabian or Sahara region of Egypt was a green land, the oasis known as Dakla, in northeast Africa, had domestic animals and game as part of the habits of its inhabitants. Animals like giraffes had already disappeared from the Sahara. So it would not be the desert that isolated some of the Hamites to the south, such as the hunters below the Sahara. 
There is evidence of cases in which the people passed from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age, using wooden bricks. The desertification of the Sahara can be understood in light of the effects of glaciations, which caused a great dryness of the territory close to the Mediterranean. The formation of these great deserts pushed animals and hunters southward. On the other hand, many tribes concentrated in the fertile Nile Valley, where they found water and resources. Around 4000 BC, in Egypt, there was the invention of linen, this linen is the first known fabric produced by man, although there is no exact date of when the fiber of linen began to be woven by man, but there are records that prove its cultivation since 2500 BC, by the Egyptians. The Sahara region began to develop rapidly, stretching some 400 miles west of the Nile, adopting a hunter-gatherer political culture. These tribes built huts and used stone tools from the nearby plateau. They lived in the region of a large lake that dried up and became a desert. From a creationist perspective, it is possible that these transformations occurred while the Ice Age was developing in northern Europe and Asia, causing the seas to shrink, the formation of land bridges and the drying of the climate. Strong continental drift and volcanic activity also contributed to brutal transformations and geographic isolation, including the formation of deserts. The skin tone of the ancient Egyptians was brownish, not as dark as that of people in the Sudan, Chad and other areas of Africa where there is a racial difference and variation in skin tones. For example, in the ancient kingdom of Kush, which included Sudan, Chad and other African regions, there is a difference in skin tones compared to ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians had a more brownish skin tone, but not as dark as people in the region that is Sudan today. We have archaeological evidence, such as the murals found in ancient Egyptian regions such as Saqqara and Beni Hassan, which clearly show what the ancient Egyptians looked like. We can also observe the contrast with the Semitic peoples, who had a slightly lighter skin tone, going towards beige or slightly tan. We can see a clear difference between the ancient Egyptians, represented in the images below with a brownish skin tone, and the Semitic peoples, represented with a yellowish or beige skin tone, coming from the Middle East. The difference between Semites and ancient Egyptians is quite obvious. However, many may mention the existence of ancient images of ancient Egyptians with skin tone similar to Semitic peoples. The explanation is simple, from 1900 BC, in ancient Egypt, there were migrations of groups of people called Hyksos, who were Semites from the Middle East, specifically from the Levant region, including Syria, Lebanon, Jordan and other areas. And so, these peoples began to mix with the ancient Egyptians. From 1900 BC, we can observe great migratory waves coming from the Middle East. These migrations settled in Egypt and, according to biblical accounts, the Semitic populations that went to the land of Egypt ended up becoming, over time, even larger than the native Egyptian population, descended from Mizraim and native black. Because of this, miscegenation occurred. A fact that is rarely addressed on the internet is miscegenation in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt was a place of great ethnic mixing, involving the ancient Egyptians, who had brownish-brown skin, and the Semites themselves, who had yellowish-beige, slightly tanned skin. We can see that the ancient Egyptians had a more brownish skin tone, while the Semites had a slightly lighter skin tone, but with different characteristics. There was, then, an ethnic mix between these peoples. From 1900 BC, native Egyptians themselves and Semitic peoples began to intermingle. This mixture lasted until 1500 BC, and other migrations occurred later. Although the priests and other members of the Egyptian population repudiated the Semitic peoples, calling them desert wanderers, desert thieves, or simply coming from the desert sands, many of them ended up relating. This is evident in the image where pharaohs married Semitic women, which highlights this miscegenation. However, miscegenation in Egypt was not limited to this, since there were also dynasties of Nubian peoples, who were actually black and originally from Sudan, who mixed with the Egyptians. Furthermore, 
We know that there was even wider interbreeding with the Macedonian peoples during the age of the Ptolemaic pharaohs, who came directly from Macedonia, Greece, and were fair-skinned. Today, the Egyptian population is a direct descendant of the ancient Egyptians, who had an intense miscegenation with the Semitic peoples and also received a genetic portion from Greece and ancient Macedonia. Because of this ethnic mix, today's Egyptians don't quite resemble representations of pharaohs from 4000 to 4500 years ago, who had a more brownish skin tone. At other times, such as between 1900 BC and 1500 BC, we can observe pharaohs with an appearance similar to Arab peoples, as well as Assyrians and Akkadians. This is due to a great miscegenation that took place. However, the origin of the ancient Egyptians goes back to Mithraim, their son, who had a darker skin tone, with a more brownish tone. However, due to miscegenation over time, they became mestizos. Hope everyone enjoyed this video. Leave a comment on which people you want to represent the next source video. See you soon.